Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you for holding this hearing today and for the witnesses for all joining us this morning and, and to talk about what I think is the, the primary focus, which are two new regulations which have been issued by um, the Department of Labor after a protracted process, which, uh, again, got actually pretty high marks uh, from groups and individuals as diverse as former uh, Governor Tom Ridge, uh, who complimented uh, the department for listening to some of the input, which again was recounted here uh, by the chairman uh, at prior hearings and, uh, and came out with an outcome uh, today that um, basically uh, strengthened uh, job discrimination protections for individuals with disabilities and men and women who've served this country in the armed forces. These rules, which are primarily non-punitive, and aspirational goals to help federal contractors monitor and evaluate their progress to ensure that they are abiding by civil rights laws. Taken together, these rules have a very simple message. If you are a veteran who served our country as a volunteer, even if you suffered a disabling injury, we have your back. These rules say that you deserve a fair shot to compete for a private sector job free of discrimination or bias based on your veteran status or disability. And these rules also say that if you are one of more than 50 million disabled Americans, you too should deserve a fair shot at a job with a federal contractor free of discrimination against you because of a disability. With the cooperation of federal contractors, the Department of Labor's rules are a game changer for veterans and disabled individuals, providing them with 715,000 additional private sector job opportunities. And as you can see uh, from the chart across the room, based on extensive analysis, the Department of Labor estimates that there will be over 200,000 job opportunities for veterans particularly those from Iraq and Afghanistan, and over 500,000 for individuals with disabilities because of this rule. Mr. Chairman, the, the many challenges veterans and individuals with disabilities face in the job market are well documented. The household wages of those with disabilities is less than half of those of households without a disability, and almost a third of those individuals have incomes below the poverty level compared to 12.5% of those who do not. As we will hear today, recent veterans facing, face significantly higher unemployment rates than non-veterans, despite the fact that Congress has passed the Hiring Our Heroes Act and the Veterans Hiring Tax Credits. Uh, I see those initiatives, which again, give incentives to employers to hire veterans as dovetailing perfectly with, again, these non-punitive aspirational goals which the department has put forth. For male Gulf War era, Gulf War era two veterans, 18 to 24, the unemployment rate today is 20%, four points higher than non-veterans in that age group. For all Gulf War era two veterans, the unemployment rate is almost 10%. This is simply unacceptable for the brave men and women who served our country, and we need to do much more. As many of you heard me in the, a number of other hearings, uh, I'm lucky enough to represent a district with a shipyard, uh, electric boat shipyard, which uh, in my opinion builds the most complex uh, vessels in the world that sustains human life in an environment that does not sustain human life um, and does it with a nuclear powered um, uh, si uh, system. Uh, over almost 20% of that workforce are veterans. Uh, again, they didn't just seek to achieve the aspirational goals that we're discussing here today, they doubled it. And frankly, if they have the opportunity to hire more veterans, uh, even those who carry uh, combat-related disabilities, they would do it in a heartbeat because the fact of the matter is is that the uh, skills of teamwork, discipline, specialized skills that are imparted in the military are something that America's workforce should not view as a burden or, or employers as a burden, but frankly as an opportunity uh, of growth and, and, and fulfilling, again, some of the workforce challenges that our nation faces. And again, these rules, which again I want to emphasize are non-punitive and aspirational, are a good start to achieve that goal. I commend all the advocates in the disability community and veterans community that have helped support the issuance of these final rules. Now again, the, the chairman has raised some issues that maybe are not directly related to these particular um, uh, regulations which are issued. And again, I think they deserve a, a very thorough uh, vetting here today and look forward to working with you um, uh, in terms of addressing some of those issues. But again, this morning, um, there was a, a shipbuilding caucus, uh, which is a bipartisan group of members that uh, General uh, James Amos, who's the Commandant of the Marine Corps, spoke for an hour. And uh, I was telling him about a um, disabled veteran in my district who lives the next town over, who's a double amputee, uh, stepped on a landmine in Afghanistan. Uh, very difficult, challenging uh, recovery. Uh, again, the general visited him on numerous occasions at Walter Reed, which was unbelievably um, appreciated by his family. Uh, but I was telling him that uh, he and I played golf 
uh, the other day, uh, Corporal uh, Karen, double amputee. He was hitting the ball 250 yards off the tee, straight down the middle, much to my dismay, because uh, I was in his foursome. Um, but, you know, to me, again, it just demonstrated that, um, you know, you give people the opportunity, and again, with some of the um, uh, unbelievable advances in medicine uh, that have taken place uh, right now, these are folks that um, have a lot more uh, to give, not only um, to themselves and their families, but also to our country. And, and that really should be the focus of today's hearing, is to try and work with these rules to take advantage of just great Americans who can, who can do a lot for our country. And with that, I yield back.